Science can be a lot of things. It can be really complex, but at its very core, science begins with one thing, asking a question. Through this video series, we're going to answer questions. Your questions. Me? Yes, you. So come with us behind the scenes where we'll be up close and personal with some amazing animals and the scientists working to save them at Smithsonian's National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute. So get ready to dive in to another episode of Other Duties as Assigned, The Secret World of Zoo Jobs. Do you ever get scared? I don't get scared. I am very respectful of the animals with whom I work. Hi, my name is Craig Sappho. I'm the curator of Andy and Bear's Kids Farm and Great Cats here at the Smithsonian's National Zoo. And I also happen to be one of the zoo's carnivore matchmakers. It's no secret that everybody loves cute, cuddly animals, especially when it comes to lions, tigers, and bears. What people don't realize often is that it takes a lot of work behind the scenes here at the zoo to get prepared to have these cute, cuddly little animals. So before we can get to the ooing and eyeing stage, we have a lot of preparation that we have to do as animal keepers to get to that point, and that's where my job as carnivore matchmaker comes in. The first step is we have to find two animals that actually get along together and are compatible breeding partners. For that, we don't just look at the current collection at the National Zoo, we look at the whole zoo population within the United States States. And we work with other zoos in the United States to try to get the right animals together. For that, we go to a group called the SSP, or Species Survival Plan. When the Species Survival Plan group gets together, they decide what the best route is to keep the entire North American population genetically healthy. And for that, we have to sometimes move animals back and forth between zoos. My team and I work very hard to follow the recommendations made by the SSP to get the appropriate animals together. Once my team and I have worked successfully with the SSP to match two animals on paper, genetically, it's our job then to make sure that the animals are actually physically compatible, so we have to start the process of introducing them. Now, don't get any crazy ideas. This isn't where we start putting on soft music and dim the lights for the cats. This is actually the part of the carnivore matchmaker's job that involves just as much art as it does science. We have to read and interpret each animal's behaviors to ensure that these introductions are done in the safest way possible. One tool we use to help the animals get to know each other is called a howdy door. A howdy door is a, basically a fenced-in window through which the animals can see each other but not physically get together. So it keeps everything nice and safe, allows the animals to have a virtual first date and get to know each other, and a really great way for them to just break the ice. If all the introductions go as planned, then we can quickly go from matchmaking to pregnancy monitoring and then hopefully to babies. In my career, I've been lucky enough to have been part of more than a dozen SSP recommendations that have led to successful births. The highlight for me of being a carnivore matchmaker here at the National Zoo has to have been when we had cheetah cubs born here for the very first time in 2004. This was when Tumai, our female cheetah, gave birth to four beautiful cubs, and it was such an impactful moment in my career that I had to go and get a tattoo to prove it. When it comes to large carnivores like lions and tigers, it's extremely important that we give mom and the babies all the space that they need. So we watch mom very carefully through a live feed that's connected to a camera in her den, and we watch for two very specific things. We watch for mom's temperament to make sure that she's okay, and we watch to see that the cubs have begun nursing. We won't go anywhere near mom or the little babies until mom really starts to, starts to show us that she tolerates our presence. When she starts to come out to grab a little bit of food from us, then we'll slowly work on closing the door between her and the babies. Once we do that, we can go in and get our hands on the little guys and hopefully get a weight on them. Weight is probably the single most important piece of information we can get from the cubs. If we get weight on the cubs, it tells us whether they're properly nursing. As you can expect, taking care of cubs can be downright adorable at times, but it's also a lot of hard work. Just like human babies, newborn animals require a lot of attention in the first few months of their lives. They'll get regular visits from our veterinary team for vaccinations and general exams, and then before they can go out into the yard, we have to cub-proof it. With our lions and tigers, there's an extra step of cub proofing. We have to make sure that they can get out of the water feature of their exhibit without our help. So we give them a specific swim test. But don't worry, we're always there to act as lifeguards while they're in the water. And then of course, we have to help them transition to food other than mom's milk as they get a little bit older. But like with human kids, you can probably imagine the first few real meals are spent playing rather than eating. 
As we watch our cubs mature and grow into young adults, we're also still continually talking to the Species Survival Plan coordinators. From there, we have to know that the plan for these guys is for them to grow and move on to other zoos so that they can become mothers and fathers on their own. Once the match is made, we start getting the animals ready to ship out. This usually involves getting the animals used to a crate that we'll use to ship them comfortably from here to their new home. Then, like proud parents sending their own kids off to college, we say goodbye for now to the little guys that we help to raise as they start the new chapter in their lives. Now that we've come full circle in carnivore matchmaking, it's time to answer some of your questions. What would you guys like to know about matchmaking with lions, tigers, bears, and more? What is it like coming face to face with big animals that we don't have in our own backyard? Honestly, it's pretty awe-inspiring. You feel like you're part of something really special when you come here and you look at an animal that you know most of the people in this country have never looked at face to face. How do you feed dangerous animals like lions? Very, very carefully. We never put our hands or any body parts on the lion's side of the enclosure. We have a special drop chute that we can push food through, or we use a special pair of tongs that we can slide meat through the fence. How many animals do zoos help? Zoos help a lot of animals. When I think of this, I don't think of the individual animals that zoos are helping because individually we have 3,000 plus animals here at the National Zoo that we take care of, but I like to think in terms of species. How many species do we help? And for the species that we help, I like to think that it's in the hundreds of species that we actually help to conserve and prevent extinction. So guys, thank you for spending time exploring the world of a zoo curator, aka carnivore matchmaker, but if you'll excuse me, I have some cubs I have to go take care of. That's it for our video series, Other Duties as Assigned, The Secret World of Zoo Jobs. We hope you've enjoyed taking a look behind the scenes with us at the National Zoo. Be sure to share this video with your friends and be on the lookout for future videos about life at the zoo and what we're doing to save species. Thank you to the Smithsonian Women's Committee for their support of this project and to you, our viewers, for tuning in. We'll see you at the National Zoo.